And first this morning, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis continues to fight the power grabs, ineptitude, and unconstitutional rulings of this White House. Earlier this week, he called the Florida legislature back for a special session to address the federal vaccine mandates to create protections for Floridians who risk losing their jobs. He is also looking to help alleviate the supply chain log jams in California by offering companies incentive packages to reroute their ships to Florida's ports. Joining me right now in this exclusive is the governor of Florida. Governor, it's good to have you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Good morning. Tell me first about the log jams that we're seeing in California. We've got about 160 ships sitting there idle, unable to uh, drop off products. That's why we've got empty shelves across the country. What can you do in Florida? Well, Maria, we're really proud of, of our seaports. Since I've been governor, we've invested about a billion dollars uh, into modernizing them and making, even, making them even more effective. So we have capacity. So if there are ships that are idled off the West Coast, and actually there's some off Savannah on the East Coast as well, uh, we've already had some from Savannah be rerouted. We can accept that. We have more capacity. And they made a big deal, Maria, recently about California ports would start doing 24-7. We always do 24-7 in Florida. And so we have multiple options. Each individual port can offer companies uh, incentive packages to be able to do it. Obviously, that's a good thing for Florida because we're driving more economic activity in our state and we've been doing very well. But it's also good for the country to be able to alleviate these log jams because to have shortages continue to pile up. And especially as we get into the Christmas season, this drive inflation even higher. I mean, it's a huge problem. And so Florida can step up uh, and help uh, be a partial solution to this really national crisis. We want to do it. So tell me more about the economy in Florida. You said that you have been creating jobs. You know, there were reporters mocking you over the last six months uh, for your stance on uh, ensuring there was freedom and liberty for Floridians. And yet now we turn around and we see what's happened in Florida with job creation. What can you tell us? So September, the nation as a whole reported 195,000 new jobs. Uh, Florida's the state numbers came out this past week. Florida's share of that was 84,500 out of the 195,000. Uh, if you look at August 2021 and look at our hotel revenue compared to August of 2019 pre-COVID, we were up 11 percent over that. The nation as a whole was down 5 percent compared to 2019 pre-COVID. And so uh, we have been able to protect hundreds and hundreds of thousands of jobs, thousands of small businesses, and we've provided more and more opportunity. We have 400 to 500,000 job openings right now in Florida. You go back when COVID first started, everyone thought because we have such a service-based and tourism-based economy that we would be having massive problems for years to come. And we were able to make sure that we protected people's right to work and businesses' right to operate. And the result is we've really been leading the way now in terms of these economic numbers, even in the face uh, of a lot of hostile trends coming out of Washington, D.C., yeah, and we haven't seen any of those hostile reporters report on any of the facts in Florida that you're talking about. Look, uh, the president is still trying to, you know, cut down the power of governors. Uh, last week, he said that he would uh, send the National Guard in there to help with the uh, supply uh, logjam, and then the White House had to walk it back. Uh, so I ask you, because the National Guard is the purview of governors, the White House is saying requesting the use of the National Guard at the state level is under the purview of governors, uh, and we are not actively pursuing the use of the National Guard on a federal level after he said he would. Would you, Governor DeSantis, consider the National Guard? Well, we have the, we have the logistical know-how and capacity with our ports of the supply chain you can bring it. We'll handle it. There will be no need uh, to do that in Florida because uh, we're, we're modernized. We're ready to go. Uh, if you're going to start talking about National Guard, you know, what he should be doing is sending them to the southern border to get that under control because that's a catastrophe. Month after month, we see 100, 200,000 people coming illegally. He inherited a policy under Donald Trump, which was effective, uh, and now it's a total disaster. And so he's always criticizing governors. He's criticizing Florida, Texas. Uh, but that's his job to secure our country, and he's failed to do so. Meanwhile, these vaccine mandates are clearly unconstitutional, and now you've got first responders quitting in droves. We're going to speak with one of them 
uh, who's uh, who just lost his benefits later on in the program, a firefighter from Seattle. But look at look at some of these mandates and how they're causing havoc because the health systems across the country are already at at crisis uh, levels, and now nurses are saying. Look, I have religious reasons. I have other reasons that I don't want to be forced to take the shot. So they're walking off the job. Military, uh, if you get discharged in the military with a dishonorable discharge, it's almost equivalent to being treated like a felon. You can't work again. Your police unions are resisting. Uh, in Chicago, there will be fewer police on the streets already, a situation that has crime surging. What, what are you doing with regard to these va vaccine mandates in Florida, Governor? Well, fortunately, uh, we've been able to put, fight back very effectively uh, against mandates imposed by, for example, local governments against police fire. Maria, these people we've been hailing as heroes, the nurses we've said have been heroes this whole time. They've been working day in and day out. They never, they couldn't do their job on Zoom. They had to be there, and they did it, and they did it with honor and integrity. Now you have people that want to kick them out of their job. Uh, over this shot, which is basically a personal decision. And you're right, what Biden's doing is unconstitutional. He does not have the authority to do this. But what it will do on a practical level, um, in addition to being unconstitutional, in addition to be taking away people's personal choices, uh, is it will wreak havoc in the economy. Because even if a small percentage of these folks end up uh, losing their jobs or voluntarily walking away, uh, you're going to have huge disruptions in medical, in logistics, in law enforcement. And so in Florida, our policy is very clear. We're going to have a special session, and we're going to say nobody should lose their job based off these injections. Uh, it's a choice you can make, uh, but we want to make sure we're protecting your jobs and your livelihoods. Yeah, not only that, but in, in a situation where there's crime spiking across the country, the president of the union, police union in Chicago, is estimating that 3,200 Chicago police are defying the vaccine and they will be off the job. That means off the streets. What is that doing to the American people and their feeling of safety? It, it, it's very concerning. Uh, your thoughts on, on where this is going? I mean, is he just trying to insist that this is a law so that companies follow before it could actually be, you know, abdicated and, and, and uh, confirmed to be unconstitutional? Well, first, I think it's important to point out on a scientific basis, most of those first responders have had COVID and have recovered. So they have strong protection. Uh, and so I think that influences their decision on a lot of this, that they have already had it and recovered. Uh, and so they're, not, they're making no accommodations for that. They're still pretending like that doesn't even exist. Uh, and so that's really, really troubling when you see that. Uh, but I can tell you, Maria, in Florida, uh, not only are we going to want to protect the, the law enforcement and, and all the jobs, uh, we're actually actively working to recruit out-of-state law enforcement because we do have needs in our police and our sheriff's departments. So in the next legislative session, I'm going to hopefully sign legislation that gives a $5,000 bonus to any out-of-state law enforcement that relocates in Florida. So NYPD, Minneapolis, Seattle, if you're not being treated well, uh, we'll treat you better here. You can fill important needs for us and we'll compensate you as a result. Well, there's a reason businesses and hedge funds are moving to Florida as well, as uh, the Democrats are negotiating tax increases, no state income tax there. Governor, thanks very much for being here. We'll keep watching the developments. We appreciate your time this morning. Thanks, Maria.